Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Whoa! Hi there, my name's Timmy Joe! Making videos about computers on the internet. I'm not doing that this year. I'm not making fun of anybody. But, uh, you know, when you were doing a P4 review and you're doing your research, you inevitably come across a video. Hello everyone! It just came to my... I just had to do it. Anyways, hi! First video. 2018 and oh my goodness it's on a piece of garbage no it's not it's not garbage it's just you know when something's just so damn slow and so damn obsolete it's hard not to call it garbage but we got a p4 here and i want to show you something got a little uh, system up and running here ah! i'm doing a cinebench run it's been running for like five minutes easily more than that maybe seven minutes and i will be lucky if it finishes by the time this video is over and we can actually see the result uh so i built myself a little system here with a p4 in it it's running on the socket 775 uh you know motherboard got a vivo case nice tempered glass affair with some blue leds and stuff in it vivo uh, power supply gtx 970 make sure there's no bottlenecks when we do the cpu benchmarks and uh, i had to put a pretty nice uh, tower cooler on it because this thing's giving me all kinds of trouble and when i first started this you know little v thing going and i had this system going i put this thing on it total joke i was having so many problems for like a day i was trying to get this thing going i thought maybe the processor was screwed up someone had sent it to me i wasn't sure if it was working it turns out the tdp on it's way too high to use this crappy stock intel cooler only cooler i have for socket 775 so i jimmy rigged this nice arctic one on and i'm gonna say thank you to joseph young for sending me the uh pentium let me see here can we get it focused uh, Pentium 4 660 Extreme Edition. Except for that's totally wrong. It's not an Extreme Edition. There are P4 Extreme Edition single cores, but they come from before this. This is actually faster than any of the Extreme Editions that were single core. And uh, this is one of the last generations of P4. Uh, pretty expensive affair in 2005, worth over $600 MSRP, which is just crazy in my opinion, because single core with hyper threading, uh, you know, it's uh, pretty much equivalent to a high end part like a. Uh, I don't know, an X299 chip, like a 6-core or 8-core these days, you know, uh, I don't know, with inflation. This was a very expensive processor. And, uh, you know, it's the Prescott uh, codename, uh, which is their codename for the 90 nanometer architecture at this point. There was an architectural change to a 65 after this that basically just shrunk the die but maintained pretty much everything else. A little bit better of an overclocker, a little bit better stock clocks, but this pretty much is... One of the fastest single core P4s there ever was. Well, really, you know, all P4s are single cores with hyper or with hyper threading or without. Uh, but then they had Pentium Ds after that, if that's what you're thinking about. And there was an extreme edition of that where they basically took two of these things, glued them together, and it was enough heat to just melt your house down. Anyways, so. We're going to do a bunch of benchmarks and stuff, and I've been using this for about four days. Hard time getting it going. Finally got it going. Not very good overclocker, at least not on the motherboard I have, uh, which is a gigabyte. Probably more meant for Core 2 Duos that were a lot more efficient than this, and the power delivery on this just can't overclock this processor past 3.7 gigahertz, which is only a, only a small 100 megahertz uh overclock so above the 3.6 stock so uh yeah this is the there was a, a cider mill after this 65 but this is prescott and it's just about the fastest p4 out there and it comes at a time much like today very reminiscent of today where intel was kind of shaking in their booties they didn't know where to go next with the pentium uh kind of thing they were doing the gigahertz war because all their whole game plan at that point was to just keep throwing clock speed and power at their chips when amd or around this time started to do some crazy things they made the architectural change to a 64-bit architecture and uh they came out with uh an athlon at the time this is their 3400 that was doing a lot better for less than half the price uh, in a lot of benchmarks and people were taking notice and market share was being sucked from Intel over to AMD a very good time 
for AMD around the turn of uh, 2005, the 64-bit era, and they had qu our uh, dual cores right, you know, ready to to come out around 2006. And uh, Intel was still kind of scratching their heads on how they were going to do that. But that's a story for another time. They ended up releasing Core 2 Duos, which were based on like Centrino mobile processors. Uh, but we're talking about P4s right now, and this thing, you know, 100, over a hundred watt TDP. Uh, you know, just suck on the juice, 3.6 gigahertz. It was a monster at the time, but would you use it for any sort of gaming today? Well, since we'd have a little bit of time to run some benchmarks and see, why don't we load up some game benchmarks and when we come back, maybe we can see exactly where it lands on this end scale. Cue those benchmarks to me, Joe! Whew. Alright, so there are two sides to the coin of the benchmarks you just watched. There are some playable games in there, especially ones that are more from the 2000s era. Far Cry, stuff like that. Half-Life, Portal, sure. Anything new, I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. And as we see the, you know, we're still waiting for the Cinebench run to go. This is a slow processor, and games just simply don't want to use a single core anymore, even if it, you know, hypothetically has two threads, and you, it's kind of tricking it to, to use both those threads as a dual core. Uh, it's not, it's not going to be good. And the other side of the coin uh, that I was talking about is that just installing stuff on this thing sucks. Oh, we're almost done. Nope. Definitely not. Uh, you just installing Windows 7, you get it on there, then it starts doing updates, and as the updates are installing with 4 gigs of RAM in this thing, it was just, which would have been, you know, pretty good for the time, 4 gigs of RAM. A lot of videos I was watching on this, you know, people had 2 gigs of RAM. Uh, and the video cards, obviously not a bottleneck. Uh, just loading into games, you know, you, it looks like things are running smooth for a minute, and then, you know, uh, the C++ redistributable will pop up, and you'll wait 15 minutes for it to install while it figures itself out. And then, uh, you know, you'll uh, load into Windows, and all of a sudden there's a very important Windows update that's uh, there because of some Intel issues. And uh, that actually uh, was about 45 minutes waiting for that to install. Now, I don't have the uh, perfect setup, but I've alleviated a lot of bench or uh, bottlenecks in this, and you'd think the benchmarks would reflect that. But, you know, the, the, the processing speed isn't absolutely terrible. Well, well, it is. 50, 
55 Cinebench score at 3.7 gigahertz. I could not overclock this thing. I think if you were able to overclock this to about 4.2, 4.4 gigahertz, I saw people doing that uh, with extreme cooling and what have you and a better, better motherboard. You might get that up to like 60 something. 20, 20% maximum improvement, which would be a lot back in the day. But when you're talking, you know, sub 75 Cinebench score, uh, an extra 20% performance isn't going to be enough to do jack shit. So in conclusion, the P4 is officially dead in 2018. And unless you're using it for an XP gaming PC and only planning on playing Windows, you know, 98 and 2000 and, you know, era games, XP era games from way before like 2009, you're going to have a bad time. Pretty much, you know, it doesn't even do esports. It doesn't even do Counter-Strike. I could load into a Counter-Strike server and it would crash out. It doesn't do Dota 2. It wouldn't even load. I don't know what's with this thing, but it pretty much sucks for anything modern. I'll see you guys in 2018. Got lots of stuff planned. It's just finding the time to do it. I hope you guys will stick around. We've been hitting some serious subscriber benchmarks and, you know, Christmas was really good for the channel. Uh, I, I hope you guys stick around. I love playing with this older hardware and even if it's annoying, you know, dealing with a P4 and all its install, you know, behavior and, you know, spending hours trying to get things working. That's the kind of itch that I like to scratch. So I hope you guys will stick around my channel and uh, in 2018, we're going to do lots more older hardware like this and, uh, you know, as money starts rolling in from the holidays and stuff like that, I'll see if I can get my hands on some, you know, new stuff. I wouldn't mind buying like a coffee like processor, playing around with that, or uh, hopefully there are some new graphics cards launched in the first quarter of 2018. That would be pretty cool to see. But uh, as for now, I will bid you guys adieu. I'm Timmy Joe, and I hope you like watching my review of the P4 660 Non Extreme Edition. Sorry, uh, but Joseph Young. But I really do thank you very much for sending me this processor because it proved to me once and for all that uh, the P4 is dead. <laughs>